Welcome to another episode from The Outdoor Analyst. I have kind of my follow-up review on the Benchmade Luku here. Originally, I did an unpackaging of it. I um, just wanted to throw it out there, let people know what it was, kind of the size. And honestly, my, my first impressions were I was kind of disappointed with it. Uh, I wasn't really impressed with the weight of it. It's super, super light, and now I should be excited about that, that it, it's felt really light but it also feel felt kind of out of balance it's very front heavy it's a luku it's a five inch blade so i shouldn't really be surprised about that but uh, i'll just be honest it felt a little unbalanced put a lot of work into it it's covid19 i've had weeks of being at home heading out to the woods cutting tons of cardboard let's face it we've all been purchasing a lot online lately so I had a stack of probably three foot by six foot of boxes that have built up over, gosh, what is this, seven weeks in supposable lockdown here. So it went through all of that. So I did a lot of cardboard cutting, took it out to the woods, did a lot of feather sticking with it. That's, that's what I like to do. I'm a feather sticker, let's face it. Chopped down some, some limbs with it on the outside thanks to some storms that went through. Just cut up some little stuff. And sort of cleaned it up. I've actually got some oxidation on the edge there that I that uh, WD-40 didn't take off. That's kind of a kind of crazy. And it's 3V though. Not really surprising. It'll just pit. Ha ha ha. So it's kind of interesting. Let's go through some of the pros. After dealing with it, using it for hours, I think I like it a little more than I originally thought. Now that's not saying this is a slam dunk or a home run, but I hated the handle to start with. The handle is this. This grippy rubber, which, you know, Mora did on kind of like their little tiny little Mora knife. And I love that thing, the Eldris. So I thought that's kind of like what it would be. But when you put this in your hand, it has these diamond-like checkerings. And I'm just going to hold this here, this for like, you know, a couple seconds. I'm gripping pretty hard, kind of like what I do with the feather stick right now. And there's indentions all over my hand. And it kind of hurts. <laughs> I do a lot of outdoor stuff, do some lifting. And, um... That shouldn't happen. That's just, it's shocking. It kind of brings pain to your hand. And if you're using it like this, that's what I thought. My first time I feather sticked with it, I was I was in pain with a knife that I just started using for a few minutes. That's kind of stupid. So I'm not the biggest fan of this. And that's why I really kind of, uh, kind of just shun this knife to start with. When I put on some gloves, game changer. The knife took on a different meaning for me. The gloves get rid of that ridiculous texturing they have on there that just bites into your hand and it takes care of that issue and you know after going through probably 20 cardboard boxes with this thing opening tape cutting it down I, I was having fun with it I was enjoying it. it felt pretty well in there it's still very forward heavy um, I just don't like that in a bushcraft knife call me picky but that's my preferences I actually like four inch maybe four and a half inch blades. And they just seem to balance out a little better for that sort of stuff. Uh, feather sticking did okay. It's got a, you know, a dual bevel V edge, so it's not gonna be amazing, but it'll get you halfway decent curls. It was okay. Wasn't the biggest fan of it. It split pretty decently. Um, uh, I don't have any video of that. I'm not splicing stuff together just for a bench made knife. And um, it did okay. Uh, one of the main issues I really so well, pros of it, well, we'll just kind of stick with pros. Is it halfway decent blade? Yes, cut cardboard well, edge retention, okay. Not not bad, not awful. Handle is okay if you have gloves, so that's a pro to it. Um, I do like the saber, saber grind here. This splits wood open really easily with a five inch blade. I feel like that's what it's kind of meant for. And a Luku design, it's great for just splitting open kindling little pieces it's it's awesome that way and did good with that i had no issues splitting open a little wood with it one thing i just gotta just gotta get out the steel was the biggest issue with the puko being 3v they like hardened it to 56 or 58 with the puko version of this the smaller the little brother and it was soft really really soft so they said on this one they fixed it it's going to be 3v hardened to you know 60 61 kind of something it's very similar to what you'd see on like a bark river lt ride adventure swarm i don't think they did um i really don't i did 20 cardboard boxes yes it took that razor edge that it did come with the razor edge i will say this the bevels aren't equal kind of annoying there for i'm guessing a cnc machine that did this 
not an equal bevel, kind of lame there, but um, the edge retention, let's get right back to that. Doled up just fine, I expect that. I cut a bunch of cardboard. To get it back, I just pulled out this little uh, work sharp sharpener. <laughs> this thing's awesome, it's tiny. Shoot, I even put giant knives through it and it works just fine. Three swipes back and forth. I think this is a 20 degree angle on the fine. This thing is hair shaving sharp right now. And, um, is it popping them up? Yeah, a little bit. That shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen at all. This thing is really, really sharp. And with that many swipes, that means this stuff is soft. And it's gotta be soft. <laughs> it's definitely not 61. I, I, I'll tell you from experience, I've got Bark Rivers, LT Rides, Adventure Swans here. Usually I just drop those because they're generally convex, but some are Scandi, so the Scandies go on, to, on the stone for sure. And, well, they get convexed anyway. Um, never had that happen. None of those will ever sharpen up that fast, even on ceramics, especially not when I start with fines. Um, 3V just doesn't work that way. So this is some weird 3V. This is some soft A stuff. And um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Kind of disappointed, honestly. It shouldn't have sharpened up that fast. So that's just kind of something I noticed. Um, we'll throw out some comparisons here just to let you know, yes, I deal with those knives. So it's kind of one similar I have. It's going to be a Bark River LT or a Bravo LT 1.25. So the Bravo LT 1.25 is a little bit thinner. It has about the same length blade you know five inch blade on there this is as big as i like to go and what i'll call a field knife anything bigger i still think this slightly gets a little unwieldy when you're doing uh, feather sticks but dear goodness does this thing just make ridiculous feather sticks the edge re geometry on this full flat convex grind just oh man hair angel little little feather sticks that come out of this it's fantastic and normally I'm not the biggest fan of bark rubber handles. They're usually too thin. This is about as thin as I can really go on a knife like this and enjoy it. It does fit in my hand. It works. Even though I kind of put this as one of the least ergonomics that I own, this is definitely the least ergonomic. This hurts your hand. It's way too thin for a Puko or Luku sort of feel. It needs to be fatter. And, uh, yeah. It just doesn't work nearly as well. The steel on this will not dull up nearly as fast. The edge retention, clearly this is hardened to a, to a higher rock well. It just, it just is. There's, there's no doubt to it. So that's not fixed. But size-wise, there's kind of the comparison of them. They're fairly similar, except in handle. This is definitely a shorter handle, and it just feels shorter. It feels like you have a lot more control, even though, gosh, you can choke up on this. This just feels way better in the hand, and I know it's not going to hurt my hand. I've used this for hours at a time, having no issues, whereas this one, a couple minutes, it's digging in and it's painful. Let's put some more comparisons up here. Here's an Adventure Sworn. What is this? Outdoorsman, I think. I, I love this knife. Used it, beat it to death. 3V, been sharpening this thing for a very long time. Handle way thicker. Way thicker than that one. And this is way more comfortable, even though some people don't like that kind of swell down there or swell up here in the dive in there. But this thing just destroys it for ergonomics, destroys it for edge retention, too. Use this a lot, use this for three weeks, but enough to know something's a little off there. Another kind of comparison. We'll move this one kind of down just to read them. Move them up. This is my LT Wright Outback, 3V steel. Use this a ton. Beat it through sticks, does a great job. Feather stick blade crazy with it. Yeah, done a lot of cardboard with this one too. This steel is so much tougher than this. This dulled way too fast. This takes a lot longer to get back to an edge. A whole lot longer. And yes, I use this one on ceramics just because it's a Scandi, even though it's probably technically a Scandi Vex now. Handle, way more comfortable, more space on there, more contours, the smoothness. This doesn't dive into your hand. And technically, just because this is my preference, these are a little shorter. 
blade wise these are just a little shorter let me put that one in the real blade and and they balance better they just do they balance so much better another kind of comparison on the i style here here's a uh, bench made bushcrafter we'll put it up next to it just the regular bushcrafter handles are actually a little bit longer on the bushcrafter blade obviously way smaller 3v so much tougher on this stuff or the hardness is just definitely harder even though this is thin probably a little thinner up front this doesn't hurt my hands <laughs> yeah it's got a crazy corn cob handle scale to it which has a little bit of texture into it you can definitely feel the kernels but man they don't hurt they don't hurt like this one hurts that's just ridiculous so definitely going to be more on the negative side yeah you can say why are you comparing 200 to 300 dollar knives all the way around because in reality you can get these on a facebook group or ebay for the 140 i paid for this all the time you see this stuff really cheap <sighs> if you don't well i guess you just don't know how to shop maybe not but most of these knives i got really inexpensively and well, I can't compare this. These are like works of art that I love to go out into the woods with. This is a Mora in my mind. <laughs> it's lightweight. It feels cheap. The steel is not the same quality as other 3Vs, even though they said they, they fixed it. Benchmade. Seems to cut a lot of corners in some areas. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like they cut guns. Ah, ha, ha. Anti-2A Benchmade. Gotta love them. Yeah, you can look that one up. So basically... I would not buy this again. It's $140. I would buy a used any one of these. Pick your brand in 3V. They're going to be better. Bark River, Venture Sworn, LT Wright especially. These, you find these a lot cheaper. It's probably my favorite brand right there. And I just can't justify this. Uh, it's going to be a beater. I'll use it. I'll abuse it. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to be an abused knife. It's lightweight. Definitely a pro. It's 3V. It's going to be way better than... All your mores out there, it's also going to be, I don't know, 10 times the price. So that's my uh, suggestion. Buy a mora, go buy used any other any other brand that's going to do a lot better in the bushcraft world. Go get an LT right for 150 bucks on eBay. Oh my gosh, 10 times better than this thing in every way, shape, and form, and American made. You know, how about the little guy? Not that I'm saying screw bench made by any means, but... This knife sucks in comparison to those, and yeah, you can pretty much buy them for about the same price. So, there it is. Benchmade Luku, kind of a disappointment.